Hello, hello. This is the Great Johannes speaking. I'm going live as usual once a week nowadays or on every Tuesday, 8 p.m. UTC plus 2, West European time that is. Uh, and I suppose, uh, as usual, I will do a little hour long talk or so. Uh, I will be talking at random about random stuff. Uh, let's see if there are some people coming into the live chat here. Yeah, I see the first people arriving. Uh, welcome to the show. This is my live show. I'm going to be uh, talking about all sorts of things today that have been on my mind in the past week. Um, I was thinking today, you know, I was born in 1980, right? If I had known in the 1990s as a teenager what was going to happen to us now in terms of mass immigration, in terms of our countries being flooded with people who absolutely hate us, right? You know, people speak nowadays of the difference between settlers and squatters. Europeans who arrived to Canada arrived to a forest, cold and damp, swampy, and they turned it into a nation. And now the people arriving are what we call squatter colonists, right? They are colonizing the Canada that others built for them. All right? It's not like the Europeans moved into the teepees of the, of the Native Americans or in their, even in their communities at all. We didn't join them. We built our own infrastructure, our own nation, right? And you can be mad about that as much as you like. But if I had known what is going to happen, what is happening to Europe today, right? If I had known about this in the 1990s or even in the 2000s, right? I, I wonder what I would have done. I was thinking maybe I would have done the same thing that Christopher McCandles did. Have you heard of Christopher McCand McCandles? Super Tramp from the movie uh, Into the Wild and from the book Into the Wild. And I think I may have done something like that. I may have simply wandered off into the into the woods somewhere. I might never have come back. And I'm serious about that. The hatred that you get online, for example, on, on my TikTok videos, the comment section, I block a lot of people. That's why you never really see uh, the hatred and the vitriol I sometimes get. But there's so many people from India, so many people from the Muslim world, the Arab world, and from the African nations who have such a deep seething hatred for white people, which is odd since we benefited them. We benefited them. We benefited people by transferring our technology and our knowledge, you know, and then eventually even, you know, giving them access to our, to our countries to allow them to live among us. Our countries have become multicultural. Theirs have not. I looked up recently, for example, what would it take for a guy like me, a Dutch man, to go to Nigeria and become a real Nigerian there. So let me show you the dif let me show you the difference here. If I would go to Nigeria as a refugee, I'll be shot. So that's the first thing. As opposed to in the Netherlands, where Nigerians will be given, um, they will be given a, a, a free accommodation, free food, free transportation. They will be given housing, right, right off the bat. If I, would, if, I, if I wanted to be a real Nigerian, I would have to marry a Nigerian woman. And then still, I will not be able to get a Nigerian passport until 15 years afterward. I will have to get the approval of a, of a, of a minister, a church minister, and of a, of, a, of a government official, and of the local mayor. Which is impossible. Most people never su succeed in this. And so in this country of 220 million people, a country that has vast resources that potentially can be an extremely wealthy country. They are making it almost impossible for foreigners to become Nigerians. Compare that to how easy it is to go to the Netherlands, throw away your ID card, throw away your passport, right? Go to the Netherlands, call yourself a refugee, you're fleeing war, you, you tell them a bullshit story and they will give you everything. You will get officially in the Netherlands within six weeks, you will be given a house to live in. But since you didn't bring any money or savings, clearly, right? Clearly you're getting everything for free. Who's paying for your rent? Who's paying for your mortgage? Who's paying for your house? They get priority, priority uh, job uh, appointments, meaning they can get jobs before anyone else can get them. So there's two wait lists, by the way, in the Netherlands, seriously, because at first they were allowing uh, foreigners who came in as refugees to skip the queue in terms of housing, the wait lists. And, and that of obviously the natives didn't like that. So they created two lists. Now they have two wait lists, one for the natives and one for immigrants. And the immigrants list goes before the natives list. 
get it? It's just so evil. It's absolutely true. I'm not making this up. You're being born in a white country, your own country that your own people built, especially in Europe, our own nations that we've had for, you know, since they were built by ourselves, by our ancestors. And even before that, when the people were there, the Dutch people, for example, have been there for thousands and thousands of years before the state of the Netherlands was ever conceived, of course, right? These people didn't come there from nothing. The states are born of the people. The people are not born of the state, right? The state is young. The people are always older than the state they live in, at least in Europe, in natural states, right? And so this is odd, right? That we, we, are, we are harming our own children's opportunities to live in their own countries because we have to favor immigration for some reason. And that's just something that I find really hard, hard to grasp. If I had known this, like I was mentioning earlier, I probably would have, in my 20s or so, I would have ran into the woods, into the wild, like Christopher McCandles from the movie Into the Wild and the book. And I would have possibly never come back, you know. But now we're, we're stuck with it, you know. We're stuck with this. And what the... <laughs> What the hell are we going to do now? So I, I spoke to a man named Daniel Natal of the Daniel Natal show. Uh, he's on YouTube. And when I mentioned that, you know, uh, people like me might be thinking of living off the grid. Living off the grid is a very popular thing uh, in our so-called right wing movement nowadays. Right. And. And he said, well, that's communism. I said, what do you mean by that? Well, he said, well, you want to establish your own communities again. And so communityism is sort of communism. But this time communism is coming from the right. And so he explained that in the past, during the industrial age, the artisans, meaning the craftsmen who knew how to make those beautiful sculptures that you see on the side of uh, cathedrals, for example, the artisans who spent so much time painting and, and building and so on, right? They were losing their jobs to machinery that could do all that way more cheaply, way easier. Not as beautiful, of course. So, so the artisan class, the guilds and so on, they lost their livelihood to machinery that came along in the industrial age. And they were the sort of first communist, quote unquote, who wanted to leave the industrial society, start over the way the Amish do, or the Mennonites to some extent. Right? But now we see a revival of this concept. So I had to think about that for a while. You know, if wanting wanting to, you know. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Someone mentions here, uh, the industrial society is like start over the way the, the way the, to the way the Amish do. Yeah, well, that's what the Amish all really did. All right. It was born out of that rea res the reaction against uh, industrial society. But nowadays we see it again, and I think it's because of um, a tremendous loss, a tremendous lack of, you know, bonding to our societies. As white people living in your own country, in your own city, you can be a minority in the cities your ancestors built, right? Even in Europe, in London and Paris, you're a minority. The, the native white British in London are a absolute minority of like 30 to 40 percent or so. You know, you can argue, well, that just means that London is a su successful place. You should be proud of it. Yeah. But if you can't live there anymore, if the whole working class has been replaced by immigrants, who, lower cost immigrants from India, Pakistan and so on. And, and if they're causing if the integration is causing trouble or if they're causing trouble, say, in, in terms of crime statistics and you're not even allowed to talk about this and you have to endure grooming gangs, mass raping British girls and that is silenced and the media ignore it then you can understand the problem we have here, right? We are at a loss. Like, what is this? How did we vote ourselves into this? Well, we didn't, no one, nobody voted for this. Nobody voted for it, but we are some, for some reason, we are, we have to put up with massive hordes of people coming into our countries who absolutely hate us, right? Who don't want to be around us. I. To give you an example, you know, we were never we were never asked exactly. So to give you an example, I saw a news article about a Muslim man spat a white baby in the face and told the white mother in England that white people shouldn't be allowed to breed. That man got away with a slap on the wrist. He did not have to go to jail. There, there's another guy, a white guy, also in England. He, he, he had made stickers warning us that white people were going to be minorities by 2060 in, uh, in England. 
he is convicted and sent to jail for like two years. So you can spit a white baby in the face and, sell, and say that white people shouldn't be allowed to breed. But if you make stickers about that threat, then you go to jail. This is how insane it is. Or, or do you, have you heard this story? There was a story, I think it was also in England, where a man had ordered a sandwich with ham, a ham sandwich, and he had left the ham sandwich at the door of a mosque. He was sent to jail for years of his life for that. It was called terrorism. But the actual terrorism, they get a slap on the wrist. Do you see how insane that is? What can we possibly do now, knowing that democracy doesn't work since we didn't vote for any of us and we're, we're not allowed to vote against it. We're not even allowed to speak out against it. This TikTok live show is actually the only place on the internet so far that I found where I can speak freely without being banned instantly. Because if, you know, on, on my YouTube channel, I get strikes. On my TikTok channel, I get strikes. On TikTok Live so far, I get away with saying, speaking my mind, you know? And that's bizarre, you know? This is almost therapy from now for me now. Like, like finally, I have like uh, 60 minutes a week. Uh, I, I'll do it once a week now on uh, Tuesday evenings. I can finally like speak my mind, you know? <laughs> I feel good. For, I feel good after speaking my mind. My frustrations go away. Anger goes away. I relax more. So it's actually healthy to speak out about the problems we are facing. Imagine all those other people in, this, in our condition who have similar thoughts that I have but who aren't able to communicate them, can't speak to anybody about it. You know, you can't say anything publicly or people might, even at your family meetings, people might be recording you on their phones, right? You have no idea what's happening. You might lose your job if you say too much at a birthday party because someone recorded it in the background, right? That's how dangerous is all this. That's how, that's how we have to live nowadays. This isn't normal. Here, somebody, somebody writes, when I helped many people during the, the C-19 period, she was censored, you were censored. I don't know if you're a she, sorry. <laughs> I assume someone's gender by accident. You know, I misspoke. Yeah, people explode at some point, exactly. Um, and have you heard the news that France's Macron wants to bring 30,000 Indian students to French universities before 2030? But why? So on the one hand, you can think, okay, maybe higher education is just a scam at this point, right? Uh, higher education is either a scam, so they just want more students, and since they're not enough white kids anymore, or they don't want to hire white kids anymore. But they're also, I also saw um, there's some there's someone on Twitter who who wrote who, who showed that they're actually lowering this, the entry standards for foreigners. So I don't know about how this works exactly, but in in Britain you have a system where you need like triple A or AAB, or I don't know what kind of scoring system that is, but you need to have a really high score as a native white person to get into a university. But for the foreigners, they lowered this by like ludicrously, you know, if, if it went down like by 50%, the requirements were like ludicrously simple. Basically any migrant can get into a, a UK university, except natives, they can't. Is it perhaps because, you know, because the natives get uh, education for free, so they can't make too much money off of them. Whereas with immigrants, they can make more money, right? So they will allow anybody to come in as long as they're paying, right? So that might be it. It might be a scam. But then again, it's a dangerous scam because these people, once they graduate, you give them titles, even if they're incompetent, they're going to expect positions of power now. And where are they going to fulfill those? In England? Well, then you're looking at, in France, for example, if Macron's plan is realized, you're looking at 30,000 people who are going to want, who are going to demand positions of power and authority in French society if they're not intending to leave, right? You know, if they're just there for the money, if the, if the money is better in France, they'll stay in France. They're not going to go back to India, right? So that's that's pretty extreme. You know, it's not like oh, you just hate people because of their races. It's total nonsense. When I was in my mid-20s, I did an internship somewhere in Germany and I had colleagues from all, all over the world. We had a good fun. Turkish people, Mexican people and Indian people. You can, you know, they're fine people. I never hated anybody because of their race, but because of their behaviors, right? So, for example, in England, you have the grooming gangs. And if you find out that most of the grooming gang members are like 
from Pakistan or, or Nepal or whatever. Why don't you deal with that? Why don't you target those people most likely to join those grooming gangs and get them out? You know, you should be get you should be able to get them out of the country or at least in jail. But you're not doing either of that. You're just allowing it and ignoring it and denying it and hushing it up in the media and punishing journalists who do want to talk about it and freezing people's bank accounts if they talk too much about it. It's just insane, you know? Uh, someone from Sweden says it used to be also free for foreigners to study in Sweden, but no longer nowadays. So they have to pay for it now. So, so then it is somewhat of a, a commercial scam, you know? They're just trying to make money off of higher education because they maybe they maybe they figured out that higher education you know we've got too many educated people anyway the netherlands is a massively overeducated people you know we have way too many phds and uh and they can't get jobs for all of those positions it's just not it's just nonsense you know yeah they think they're going to get rid of us chip them and have permanent idiot slaves yeah maybe like that huh? <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know about that. You know, the problem isn't that we have too few babies in the West. The problem is that the, the policies in place by the government actually prevent us from having more children. For example, in the 1990s, they pushed the, uh, the pill uh, and, and contraceptives onto the, onto the Dutch women. All of a sudden, the Dutch women stop having children. And they start promoting feminism and the child-free life and so on. And, and so that's how it happened. It was not a natural phenomenon. It was by design. Our problem, therefore, is we have an evil government that hates its own people and deliberately plans to diminish the size of the native population to make us more diverse with immigration. It's by design. It's not an accident. It's not like the white people don't want to have families. They can't get housing. They have to postpone having families by at least a decade, you know. Whereas we are importing large families with four, five, six, seven children who are getting free housing, who are getting the larger houses of the subsidized housing market. And wh whereas native women couldn't possibly do this, they can't make enough money. Even with two jobs, you can't make enough money to have a nice house in the Netherlands anymore. But immigrants can get such houses because they get them for free. So it's just shocking. Yeah, the houses are way too expensive. Yeah. Do you think diversity comes along with Asian exclusion? I don't really know what that means. You know? Yeah. Corpse, corpse jobs, okay. You know, I was also thinking about, you know, the nature of progress, you know, Elon Musk is, is working on these Neuralink things. And today he tweeted that they, they had their first patient had they have a Neuralink thing installed in their brain. Why would you do that? Someone must have gotten a lot of money for it to be a guinea pig. Um, and then I realized it's a two way thing, right? It's a two way module. It doesn't just read your thoughts and then process them for you. It It's also an input, right? Meaning you can also uh, broadcast commands to this module and make people believe things, right? At least that's what it's going to be, right? They want to make you like, uh, say you don't know anything about accounting, but then they'll, they'll, they'll just blast your brain with accounting knowledge like that. And so you can pretend to be an accountant because of that kind of neural link. I think that's really uh, the end of humanity then. That's the end of humanity. Because if this, you, you know how this works, right? Once you have such a plug in your brain, if it works, if you can have like enhanced knowledge or intelligence, thanks to it, then everyone else will have to get one because you will not be able to compete with people who do. And that's the end of humanity. This is why I think we need some kind of a new Luddite movement. The Luddites were people who revolted against the industrialism and they wanted to start things like what the Amish did eventually, right? And what the Mennonites did uh, to go off the grid for real. And I think this is really not a crazy idea. I don't care if you call it communism to live off the grid with a small community. I think it's important to realize that in the very long term, the question arises, do we want to stay human or not? You know, a thousand years from now, if the Amish pull through, they will definitely still be human. 
But I wonder what will happen to the rest of us if our brains are full of Neuralink equipment, especially if you have to start upgrading that stuff or, the, or these things blow up in your brain, you know, something really bad might happen to it. All right, someone says the more they promote blacks on the media, they, the more Asians are getting excluded. That's probably because of the conflict the West has with China. And because when they say Asians, in this case, they don't mean Indian people. They mean East Asians, meaning Chinese people and so on and Japanese because the West wants to defeat China. So they don't want Chinese people educated at our universities because they fear that they may be spies or whatever or something else, something bad. They might have positions of influence in Western society. So it's peculiar then that apparently the Western system trusts Indian people with positions of power in our societies, but not Asiatic, meaning uh, East Asians, not Chinese and Japanese. We don't trust those. Their danger, they might be spies for the Communist Party, right? But apparently they still see Indian people as willing slaves that they can control, which I think is also highly unlikely, highly doubtful. Don't you think China is smarter than this? Don't you think China is actually sending uh, Indian recruits to the West to study at our universities? Indians who ultimately are going to report to China. I think China could be that smart. I mean, we have to think about these things. It's extremely dangerous what we're doing. Once you give a foreign people positions of power in your society, first thing they're going to do is they're going to enact some perce perceived revenge. I don't think this will end well. So in my own thought processes, right? When I try to when I try to imagine like what what on earth are we supposed to do? Europe is going to become Western Europe in particular is going to become a highly diverse multicultural dystopia. It will only work as long the, as long as the money keeps flowing. Without money, when the money dries up and people start going hungry, it will fall apart immediately into tribal warfare, endless tribal warfare, and the strongest tribes will win. Local tribes will dominate regions and so on. And I wonder who, who would come out on top of that. If in the case of the white people, the natives are, we have this massive old population, the boomers who are going to die out. Uh, and we don't have that many young people anymore. Do you think we will be able will be able to turn the tide? And I noticed that in Europe it happens to be so that rural areas are losing people because their their children born in the countryside all move to the cities, and the cities also attract all the migrants. Migrants rarely go to the countryside in Europe. Immigrants from outside of Europe rarely go to the countryside. Is this perhaps an opportunity then for a sort of neo Luddite movement, where we? organize ourselves where we get young couples to move out into the countryside basically to re renew the countryside and stake it out there while perhaps the cities are going to collapse but then you are still at risk of course what happens if the cities go hungry they're going to seize the farms you know they're going to do that that's what stalin did when the cities went hungry stalin attacked the farmers and starved the farmers to feed the cities that was really extreme so you have to wonder about what are the opportunities here? What the hell? What the hell can we do? And me personally, yeah, I don't mind telling you that I, I can't really see much of a pleasant future anymore. I find it. It's not. I'm not depressed in this sense. I'm more like defiant. I want to push back and fight back, right? But I need a path forward, and I don't see it yet. So I wish I were more more intelligent. I wish I were a bit of. A, I wish I were a genius, you know, then I could see, ah, I could see the path forward, but I can't see it yet. And that's, it's very dark and misty in this sense where I want so badly, I want to help our people, you know, European type people to have a great future, a future that we command, where we are in charge of our own future, which is different from being in charge of the world. I don't care about world domination. I care about be, us being able to do our own thing. And, and for me, that means fresh air. The smell of pine tree woods <clears throat> and fresh water where you can stick your cup in a stream and drink from it without getting poisoned. You know, I know that's hard to do in an industrial society with billions of people, right? But it's not impossible to do if you are willing to break free from the larger society. <clears throat> I think the way I might imagine it is, uh, what if we get our so-called right-wing people, right? Or whoever, whoever wants to join us 
people who are ready to leave this mess behind or to leave the globalist world and to live in opposition to the globalist system. Not many people will be able to do that. Not many people will want to do that because you'll be persecuted eventually, right? I don't know to what extent, <coughs> sorry, I don't know to what extent the Amish are left alone by the government. At some point, if the Amish become a problem to the state, the military will step in, right? So I wonder how the Amish actually succeed in evading police and military and so on. How do they avoid getting uh, harmed by, by the federal authorities? I wonder how that goes. South Korea has the lowest number of newborns in the world and the Amish have the highest. They double their numbers every, uh, every 10 years now for quite some time. That's amazing. So the Amish are doing something right and they don't even need modern technology for it. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. And I think, yeah, their society, every society has good, something good and something bad in it, right? All right. I find it interesting. There's this movie they made about the Swedish summer summer festival. I think it was called something like Solmar, Solmar, whatever, where they really portrayed Swedish people as these evil cannibalistic monsters who burn people alive. I think they do that on purpose because they don't want white people to believe that there's a way out. They want you to think you have to be stuck in your cubicle and your, you know, in your uh, in your high rise uh, residential tower. And then don't even think about a fresh environment where you can start over, you know? Midsummer, yeah, Midsummer, that movie where they make you make us look really bad, you know? Midsummer. Is there somebody uh, somebody being nasty? <laughs> uh, somebody tried, somebody thought of joining the Amish. I don't can can you join the Amish or do you have to start your own club, right? The Amish have guns, okay, so they can kind of defend themselves, yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Midsummer was the name of that movie. The Yellow Deli 12 Drives. Oh, no, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have a little look at uh, at my uh, Twitter uh, feed. So I like to find random things to talk about. So I have uh, usually have something to say, you know. Oh, yeah, the farmers' revolts. Yeah, that's a very big thing now, right? It's in Sweden. It's in Romania, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Belgium. And the media don't really report on it that much, right? It's not because it's not aligned with the globalist interest. This is actually the anti-globalist movement. The farmers in Europe are revolting. And I was talking about why. Why do they revolt? And in one sense, if you... The, the farmers are um, driven off their land, especially the uh, the cattle farmers, right? For the meat production. They're driven off their land so that you can make the population uh, eat uh, fake meat or uh, lab-grown meat or vegan, right? But also, the second thing is, by chasing off the farmers, the farmers in Europe are all, almost all of them, like I'd say exclusively all of them, are white native European type people. And if you remove them, then you disconnect the connection between the white people of Europe and the land, because without the, the farmers are that connection between the land and their people. And without these farmers, you know, uh, the European white people are going to have a hard time lodging a, a guerrilla style revolt against their governments if there are no farmers to feed them and, and no places to hide, no farmhouses to hide the rebellion or the resistance. And is that what it is? Are European governments driving out the farmers because they fear they might actually fuel uh, a popular revolt against the governments because you need the farmers to do so. Krieg Slipful, hey, hello, how are you, how are you doing? Uh, somebody in Dutch is uh, complimenting me. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, Trump is not controlled opposition. I wonder how it is. You know. I wonder what he really is up to. I think there's a good reason why the elites hate him. You know? The other elites, because he is, of course, a, a billionaire. So he's also kind of elite, but he's he's in opposition to the other ones, the other elites. You know? So he's like a populist, but he you can support him because he's going to fight 
at least to some extent, he's going to fight on your behalf. You know? So that's probably true, right? Love your content, nationalist Melanie. Yeah. I think 20% of my viewers on my TikTok channel are women. Pretty good, I'd say. <laughs> Uh, I know a woman, and she's also very right wing on Twitter, and she has uh, TikTok. Uh, sorry, TikTok, and she has like sixty five percent female viewers. So, yeah, it's not like women aren't interested in the right wing storyline. You know, I think many women are, but you know, it depends on who's presenting it. If a woman presents right wing beliefs, then more women will watch it. I think that's just how it is. Yeah, someone asks in Dutch if uh, if we can still save Europe. Yeah, yes, we can still save Europe because Europe isn't a place. Europe is our people, uh, our many peoples. Because Europe is always plural, plurality, right? Plural peoples. We have good peoples. We should definitely figure out how to support each other. You know. You know the the Ukraine Russia conflict is so deeply complex. Because there are Ukrainians who hate Islam so much, they are actually fighting Russia because Russia is kind of pro-Islam. Russia has uh, Dagestan or, or uh, Chechnya in it, which are Muslim, right? And and there are like also Russian nationalists who would prefer fighting on the Ukrainian side against Russia because Russia, Putin is like a civic nationalist, nationalist who uh, who uh, who doesn't care about immigration as long as they speak Russian. And so you see, there's so much complexity going on there. Like you don't really know who's who often. You know, you have Ukrainians obviously who want the diversity and they want to join the EU and have more African immigrants. But then you also saw that when the war started, the African uh, educational immigrants, the African immigrants, they immediately deserted Ukraine. They didn't care about that country. It's not our war. Try getting Africans and Indians to fight for Western interests today. I don't think they can do it, you know. Far right and proud, yeah. Well, it's definitely not nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of Ukraine refugees too. I noticed that it's the rich Ukrainians who got to the Netherlands first with that with actual Porsche cars and so on and big cars. And the poor Ukrainians are still in Ukraine. I think I think you know, tens of tens of, I think they still have like 35 million people in their country. So, you know, you have to be wealthy to leave the country. The same is true for the African migrants coming to Europe. They're not the poorest ones. The ones coming to Europe are the ones who can afford the trip. And that's like 5,000 euros or so over land and sea, right? Or 10,000 if you want to pay the smugglers and you want to get a passport or, uh, or if you want to have a refugee status, that's like 10,000 euros. It's the wealthier ones leaving Africa coming to Europe wealthy by their standards i mean not by our standards but then again it's it's not healthy this mass immigration thing has it should have stopped a long time ago it's just so wrong you know where did it go wrong well you can blame the industrial age for uh the technology and the medical technology oh we should have never invented medical technology because too many babies started surviving yeah you can think that way yeah uh, hi, Jonas. What's your opinion about Trump? Uh, well, like I was saying, I think he's a populist, but you can support him because he he fights the other. It's called the Beltway elite. He's he's fighting the other elites, and so I think that's a good thing. In general, Trump uh, will be more will be beneficial, better than Biden, better than uh, Nimarata, Nikki Haley, better than uh, better than Vivek. Yeah, I don't trust this stuff. That, People like Vivek because he speaks the right wing tongue, right? This, the right wing language. But I don't like it because this is a perfect example of you importing foreigners, you know, meaning racially foreign people and putting them in positions of power over you, thinking that they will serve your interests. That never happens. When Scotland is in like a 96% white country, they have a Muslim prime minister or a Muslim president or Muslim leader. And the first thing he did when he was elected in office was bring his Muslim friends on board and they did Muslim Islamic prayers in the prime minister's office right there on day one. So that is a clear message that he is not serving your interests. You know, he's serving his own interests. It, this is something that in the Western world we have always called nepotism. Nepotism means that you uh, 
uh, you're you're a powerful person, but you only care about your family at the expense of the people. Right? That's nepotism. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope Trump will close the border. Yeah, he should deport people. We should have the right to just send people back. You know, it's insane that you, sending people back is called racist. It's absolutely insane. Uh, we have. I think in Germany, they have found out that half of the Africans who came as refugees since 2015 can't read and write, or at least they can't read the Latin script. Maybe they can read the Arab script, but you need to read the, the Latin script if you want to live in, in Europe. If they can't read it, then they can't be employed. But they also can't send them back because their home countries don't want these people back. Even if you would try to deport them, uh, the African countries wouldn't take them back. So that is mean. We have to find solutions to these things and possibly simply absolutely closing the border. I really dislike, you know, Meloni of Italy. She comes across as such an incredible traitor. Pro she promises to be like the right wing strong woman, like the Thatcher of Italy. And then you elect her and she's just a total traitor who opens the borders, opens the floodgates, you know. It's just wrong. I think she is. That is an example of controlled opposition, like a real um, globalist, you know, globalist liars. I was also wondering recently, like, how how do they do it? How do these globalists ever again continuously manage to, you know, control the people? You know, they manage to get people to go along with their programs right and there seems to be there never seems to be anything we can do about it because the masses of the people they just go along with it the masses of the people just go along with it they don't they don't actually revolt ever i just don't get it you know what do you think about the americans using europe for their own interests well the american leadership is often harming Europe just so they can stay uh, economically in charge. Yeah. I spoke about it many times already. Uh, the, American, the US leadership is using Europe as a buffer between it and Russia and China. And I don't think they care if they would destroy Europe in the process. So that is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the live. Yeah, they push such powerful propaganda. It's crazy. It's like Soviet Union style propaganda and worse. Yeah, it's it's like the high tech version of Soviet propaganda. It's just so extreme. Really, someone here says they had 800 boys from Morocco and there were they weren't refugees, so they didn't get welfare or school. Wow, that's weird. Have you visited places outside of Europe and North America? What's your impression? Yeah, I visited uh, China. So uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai, Beijing. I was extremely impressed by the big cities in East Asia uh, because they were, well, they, I've also visited the slums, by the way. I've been to the slums of uh, Beijing and Shanghai. I've seen those too, but still the other parts that they built were super modern. They had like self-driving trams and trains when we never, we don't even have those in the Netherlands today. And that was like 20 years ago, you know? 80% <clears throat> of politicians have dual citizenship with Israel in the USA. That's so extreme. Then you're, you're being occupied by a foreign nation. This is a foreign occupation in this case. That's, that shouldn't be allowed. You know, the re one reason why, well, two reasons why they do that. The first is they wanted the dual citizenship so they could get their Israeli people into the American power politi political system. But secondly, these globalists, they always dream of turning something into the springboard for their dreamed world government. And so if you could turn the U.S. system into a, if you abolish the American borders, make it an open society where everybody in the world gets to vote in U.S. election, imagine something like that, right? So they want to do that electronically. This is why Uncle Soros, George Soros, spearheaded the uh, electronic voting machines because you can't really do paper voting around the whole world, right? If you want to do uh, a national vote, or you want to do a vote, any, a global vote, it will have to be electronic or you simply will not be able to do the counting, right? So they want to do a global voting system, electronic voting system, so they, they, for example, can get everybody to vote on issues in the USA and make the US basically a global, the world nation, 
without without your permission, of course, I mean one thing you won't be a vote won't be allowed to vote for or against is whether or not you want that. Now they're going to shove that down your throat. And if they can't do it with the USA, then they'll do it with the European Union. And if they can't do it with the European Union, they'll find some place where they can do it. But they're going to do it. That's their plan to create the world government with a global electronic voting system, which can probably be rigged easily anyway, right? And that's how they want to do it. You know, it's obscene. All right, Morocco didn't want those boys back, so it was a big problem. Okay, weird. You know, yeah, they should take them back to their people, right? What did you think of America when you traveled there? Well, I traveled around the U.S., the big cities, and also I've been to Denver, Colorado, and L.A., Miami, Chicago, San Francisco. Yeah, I did like the cities, though. The inner cities, I was a bit confused. Like, San Francisco inner city had a lot of, a lot of homeless people. I was quite shocked. So coming from the Netherlands, where I almost, well, in those days, you would never see homeless people on the streets in the Netherlands. And then I came to the, to the United States, and the two things that I noticed was, you have so many homeless people there, and so many black people. Yeah, That was a big shock. Because we didn't have those in the Netherlands back then, homeless people and black people. Uh, or not so many, you didn't see them that much. Uh, but yeah, of course, uh, on the other hand, you know, these big cities, despite uh, despite the homelessness problem, it was still quite impressive, of course. But that's, you learn very quickly to simply not go to downtown. Just avoid downtown in the U.S. Go to the nicer neighborhoods elsewhere, and then you're fine, usually. Yeah. Thoughts on airdropping refugees into Iran? I don't know why you want to do that. Why don't you just bring them back to their own actual countries, you know? This whole conflict with Iran is, uh, they say it might be a way to, to see if the U.S. will take the bait, if they will start a war against Iran, because in that case, there will be a, it will be a proxy war against China, really, and so on. So, uh, but it's actually the Chinese trying to lure Americans into that conflict in Iran, possibly also to drain American uh, military resources so they can't really fight Russia effectively anymore. Mm. We'll see how that goes, you know. Right. Okay, I was looking at my uh, Twitter feed to see if there's some things uh, to talk about, you know. Median rents across the entire USA are, they went from $1,400 a month on average to $1,700 a month in a year. But of course, uh, salaries did not increase. Yeah, rent is, rent is ridiculous everywhere in the Western world. It's just not right. People are people are working so hard and they spend like half or more of it on just to live in a, a place they hardly use anyway. If you're working full time, then you're not even using your place that much. It's obscene, you know. Uh, yeah, have you heard that the uh, the diversity officer at Harvard is now also accused of plagiarism after the she was she's black obviously and the uh the harvard president claudine gay of course was uh, already fired over it and you see how weird they respond to it like like they think that plagiarism is something white people invented to hurt hurt black people <laughs> like they didn't get no one grasped that this is what white people have been doing to each other all the time if white people were caught plagiarizing they got fired or they were demoted or humiliated publicly some in some cases even sued and now black people come online and they go into harvard with plagiarized text of course and now they pretend as though they didn't know that was wrong when when this has been a really hot issue for us you know the whole idea of academic integrity depends on you properly citing and quoting others that you use in your research and by not doing so you are you're no longer part of the team you know it's weird that they make this about, oh, this is another thing that white people do to, to harm black people. Like, wow, you know. I keep thinking about Daniel Penny. You know who he is? He was on the New York subway where someone was uh, a weirdo who had been caught by the police like 50 times or so, was harassing women. So he got the guy in a chokehold 
and the guy died as a consequence of it because he was a marine right now you can't excuse that like i'm not the lawyer in this case but it's quite obvious that he was a good samaritan trying to do the right thing and so he held the guy in a chokehold until police arrived but he died in the process so the guy and the guy was black of course so they're making it like this is another george floyd right this is another derek Chauv derek chauvin so so i was thinking if i would if i would ever want to visit the us anymore if i were on a train and some woman got raped on a train i would have to check if the guy raping her is black because if he's black then i won't do anything to save her but if he's white then maybe i will do something to save her because I, then i i won't won't go won't have to go to jail for it right for being a good samaritan that's insane you know did you have to think about that nowadays like Oh no, as a woman in distress, I want to help her, but oh no, the, the perpetrator is a black, so I better not do anything or I might go to jail for racism, right? Jesus, you have to think about that nowadays. It's, it's just nuts. Yeah, Derek Chauvin is also innocent. I saw the documentary, uh, The Fall of Minneapolis. It is excellent. It shows you the police body camera footage. He's totally, totally innocent. But try explaining that to the media, you know? Try explaining that to anybody. You have, nobody will believe it because he's been convicted. So nobody will believe it anymore. <clears throat> you lived in San Francisco many years ago, but it's destroyed now. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you know Nick? Do you mean Nick Fuentes? Yeah, I've heard of Nick Fuentes. Yeah, I don't really follow him. Uh, I don't know. I think. Wait, I need to look something up. All right. I know during a live stream, you're not supposed to keep quiet. So I'll just keep talking a little bit. Uh, if you want to find someone else to follow on YouTube, it's the, da the Daniel Natal show. He's, he's like a little Yoda, but he's totally genius, genius guy who explains everything that you didn't know yet. yeah free speech in the west is a joke at least in the united states you know you used to have the first amendment or you still have it but it used to be respected in europe we never had something like the first amendment and it was more like you know you know nowadays you just can't talk about anything you can't talk about the truth they say if uh, a certain ethnicity in Sweden is ca causing 90% of the rapes and it's not native white men, then you can't mention what that ethnicity is. You go to jail for racism. All right? Or if even on YouTube or even on Facebook, you like a post about someone saying we should deport the brown rapist. You like a post like that in Sweden, you can go to jail. I think an old grandma actually went to jail for liking a Facebook post. how dystopian is that that's police state level level weirdness you know hold on yeah social media we're being censored everywhere and it's, it's just it's just going to get worse and worse it's just really 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 bad soviet level high tech soviet level yeah uh someone asked if i'm going to stream on my dutch channel i might think of doing that yeah i might do that maybe i'll do that on thursdays because I, I won't do it <laughs> i won't do it on the same day of course uh, maybe tuesdays on in english on my english channel and then maybe uh, thursday i'll do it on my uh my dutch channel as well let's see about that what do you think about the new leader of the netherlands geert wilders i don't know if he's officially prime minister yet i don't think so but I think he's, they're using him to try to see if right-wing men will follow his lead. He's pro-Israel, pro-Ukraine. He wants the war against Russia. He should. He's probably elected to be the wartime president, a wartime premier. But I, uh, I don't, I don't trust him. I don't really personally like him that much. You know. You can follow me on uh, jmk.info. That's my newsletter, my Substack. I'll type it out for you, so you can go there. 
you can get a free subscription or a, a paid subscription but the difference there's no real difference because so far all my all my newsletters have been uh, public for everybody so yeah he will send the dutch into the into the meat grinder yeah i think he will i think that's what he's for yeah. same with maloney is like that and uh but not trump they they are afraid of trump because i think trump would not want war with russia Wow, someone was in on on their way home and five black men surrounded you, but a Swedish man saved you. Wow, real hero. That's interesting, dude. Alright, see you later. My opinion on Slavs, they are people. <laughs> what do you want to know about Slavs, you know? They're the connection between uh East and West, you know. Am I shadow banned? Nah, I don't think I'm shadow banned. I have tons of views on my TikTok channel, you know. I have like uh sometimes my videos get like a hundred hundred thousand views or so, which I don't think that's shadow banned, no. Okay, let me just go through some things on uh I was still reading my uh, Twitter feed, see if there's something uh, interesting coming up. Yeah, you know the Russian uh, foreign foreign uh, the foreign minister. I think she's a woman. I don't know. Her, I don't remember her name. She made a joke. She said like, if Russia were to supply weapons to Texas in the conflict with the federal government, that doesn't mean Russia is involved, <laughs> because that's what the U.S. said. That's what Western nations say about Ukraine. Like, oh, we're shipping weapons to Ukraine, but that doesn't mean we're involved. All right. I feel that Western nations are already feeling the drain on their tax base. Uh, it's already, I think they're already thinking of how to tax the people more just to secure money for, uh, for Ukraine. It's just so expensive. What I also think is that it is a, it is a uh, what do you call it, a money laundering operation by the West. Meaning we send a lot of money to Ukraine, but we don't know what it's being spent on. A lot of that money is spent on the US weapons uh, industry. And a lot of money, I think, is being funneled to Israel to fight Gaza, for example. And a lot of more, a lot more money is simply being funneled to secret services, so they have like funding to do other things. So our money is not being spent on what they say it is. That's my opinion. You know. I don't trust anything anymore. I think when I started this live stream, I was talking about how I don't really like anything about the future anymore. I can't see a path forward and that I would have liked, I probably would have, if I were younger, I would have like ran off into the, into the wild, like Christopher McCandles from that book into the wild, because you know, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for collapse. We are the people of the top waiting for, waiting for the collapse, waiting for the breakdown, you know, Maria Zaharova, that was her name. Exactly. That's the foreign minister. Thought that was funny. All right, all right. Someone says maybe the shadow ban. No, most of the time my uh, my live stream gets like fifty people watching or so total. Not it doesn't really increase that much because I'm just a guy, you know. I'm not I'm not some beautiful girl, and then people just don't watch that so much. But I still enjoy it. I don't mind if it's just fifty or twenty. If I would do it if it were five people, so that's not the issue. I just like to speak once in a while, you know. I read that the USA can't afford to send both Israel and yeah, support both Israel and Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. And imagine if they would now also open a front in, in Iran, because that's what China is fishing for. I think uh, I read a tweet by Kim Dotcom. He, he has quite clever uh, political analysis. So imagine that the US would also get involved in Iran. Then you have Iran, Israel and Ukraine. And the United States Empire cannot afford those fronts. So I think the enemy, you know, if you want to call it the enemy, China, they know this. They know they can drain the U.S. economy. It turns out Western nations are not at all as wealthy as they look. We're very good at makeup, basically. We look really good on the outside, but we really don't have that much funding. We don't have enough people. There's no way that the West could win a world again, win a war against the world. Impossible, you know. 
Yeah. Swedish Democrats. Yeah. Yes, sometimes, uh, well, thanks for sharing. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Sometimes I had like 200 viewers on our, on our live stream, but it doesn't happen until after uh, like one and a half hour in or something. Then all of a sudden I had like 200 viewers. But it's, it's not what it's about, you know. I got like a large number of people on my regular TikTok account, like I think almost 45,000 followers there. I want to grow it to uh, 100k and then maybe to a million. Of course, I want to do that. Let's see how far I can get. In the Netherlands, we have a farmer's party called BBB, the Farmer Citizen Movement, BBB. And they actually supported uh, driving farmers off of their land. It's total control opposition. It's just, uh, I keep saying how evil things are, but it's, it's just how it is. The whole political system is rigged against the people. Here somebody writes, uh, people are still unaware of the thousands of farmers across Europe protesting against governments. Yeah, we, they don't show us the footage. The media are, are hushing this up, just like they did with the truckers revolt. They made the truckers out to be racist, Nazis, xenophobes and so on. But the truckers were really there because they're the working class and they simply couldn't make a living anymore. You were trampling on people who are delivering you your, your Amazon parcels, you know. And, and you don't even have the respect to pay them a living wage, you know, maybe your society is just broken. You know, you know, these uh, VR goggles like the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, what did it what the hell is that all about you know we have we've seen this before right facebook had it right and there was this other company i forget their names constantly but they're trying to forge our reality if they could do it if they could implant our eyes with other eyes and make us see things that aren't there and same with our ears they would capture our senses and then produce for us an entirely fake reality i hope it never happens you know all right yeah texas is fun texas is fighting the federal government right Texas border guards are fighting the federal agents because uh, they don't want any more immigration. So this is the point where you think maybe the United States as also as a system is not as stable as it is. Remember that Chechnya was a runaway province of the Russian Federation. And so Putin had to work really hard to restore, to glue it back together. That's what this is, but it's the Western version of it, right? Texas might secede from the US at some point. It might not want to be part of the USA anymore if they're not being treated right. And so you see that this, these systems, also in Europe, we have Hungary. Hungary goes against the European Union. But these fractures, of course, are very, very important because they will be exploited by, you know, China and Russia. Uh, someone asked, like, what do you think of European paganism versus Christianity? I think we need some kind of unity in Europe. So I would favor now Christianity because it's something we are all familiar with. Whereas the paganism can provide a very fine mythology and a, an emotional experience. I don't, I, I have nothing against that. You know, I'm not a pure purist or something Puritan. I just think as Europeans as a whole need something to unite under and it can't be this weak version of Christianity. Somebody said that Christianity is just too, uh, too weak in Europe, meaning it turned the other cheek and, uh, you know, when we need something more, uh, more vicious, but Christianity, I think can offer that as well. Didn't the, uh, didn't the uh, crusaders unite under Christianity? You know, you can read some of these eyewitness accounts of the crusaders who actually joined the crusades in those days and they liked it. These were men who, who said like, wow, I, I met, I'm just like an Englishman. He meets these French guys and Danish guys. It's like, wow, we speak different languages, but we can all be united under Christianity. And that's maybe what Christianity is for. A revolution of common sense is coming in the US. Yeah. It is all falling apart, isn't it? The globalist system is falling apart before it even was materialized. We never had a world government, but it seems like we will never have one. I hope not. And then we have, of course, uh, you know, Texas is uh, maybe breaking away from the federal system. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you have Ukraine is a big problem. There's conflict everywhere. It's breaking apart. 
the Suez Channel or Canal is no longer useful for trade because of the Houthi rebels, which is really harm. It's supposed to be harming European economies. I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah? <clears throat> Europeans are not receiving their LNG gas anymore from the US because Biden no longer wanted to sell us the gas for climate reasons. You know, total, uh, total rip off. Biden can't be elected again. The guy's just mentally not there. Well, you see what they did during the J6 things, the January 6th. They call it a revolt, right? Or what do you call it? The populist uprising. It was nothing. It was totally nothing. It was fake. Fake and staged. You see that the media are more interested in creating fictions they did the same thing to the canadian truckers they create these fictions of the truckers as being racist fascist xenophobes neo-nazis trying to burn down you know you're dealing with people who are completely delusional who have no feeling for reality and no no attachment to reality they're just nuts their whole lives these are people who have always made stuff up and then they truly believe their own imaginations about something they cannot even begin to perceive that what they thought about the world wasn't so. It's, it's almost as if they don't believe. That is a form of autism, right? Where you only perceive your own imaginations, but you fail to perceive the world outside. It's a form of autism. But these people are, are powerful. They're in charge. These delusional people are in charge. Yeah, they called it worse than 9-11 in Pearl Harbor. And you know what? They believe that. They really believe that. They're not. <clears throat> All right, I've been speaking for an hour. Usually I wrap it up. So you can follow me on uh, www.jmk.info. That's my, uh, my newsletter. <clears throat> I'm also on TikTok here at the Great Johannes, and I'm also on <clears throat> on uh, Twitter as uh, uh, Johannes MKX. So uh, see you later. See you next week. Next week Tuesday, I'll do this again. Bye bye. <clears throat>